You wanted to you made, wanted to make a point there. Yeah, just uh, like the final final point because, like I said, I, I how Concordus put it. You know, the the end goal is it achievable? I don't think the goal of antinatalism is achievable. If I'm honest, I I don't think we will go to that place. So this is why I'm not arguing for it. However, like I said before, I cannot argue against it either because the argument is sound. I mean, for every, Gary made the analogy for every lion cub that reaches adulthood, there are 10 lion cubs that die in horrible ways. And now the antinatalist says these 10 lion cubs are not worth it for that one lion to live. The price you pay for the joy to have is too much. This is the antinatalist position. Now, you may say that it's worth it. And but Chris, I mean, let, 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 let's change well, that from can genetics you be brief, Sandra, to I, As ideas. normal, the amount of callers that have come in in the second oh, half of the show okay. is just going through the roof. So if you can be yes. brief, and I'm going to remove you, Chris, as I bring in the next caller. Sandra, okay. conclude your point. Okay. 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 Um, two things. First of all, if you apply that to ideas, you know, the fact that most ideas are dumb, um, what, why is it worth having 10 bad ideas for every one good one? I mean, why why not just stop thinking? And you know, we've lost Chris. Yeah, I, I wanted to come back. On that. Anyway, I mean, the, the, the second point is more generic, and that price for um, the wonders that I have seen is the suffering that I have encountered in my life. And that is a price that I gladly pay. OK, I do want to move on because, as I say, we've suddenly got a huge backlog of callers. Um, thank you, Chris. Now, please don't take it as uh, disrespect that I um, removed you. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the show uh, in two weeks' time. Daniel, are you with us? Um, yeah, I am. Hi, how can we help you? Um, I would just like to make the point that obviously natural selection doesn't just work at the gene level. And obviously it works at the idea level as well. So. Obviously, it acts on what Richard Dawkins would call means. So, like the, the the thought that life isn't worth it is a maladaptive thought. It's not a fit idea to replicate. Yeah, so yeah so I say that to it's agree. the tautology that successful patterns propagate successfully. Yes, um, thank you, Daniel. I agree completely. But yeah, I'd just like to make the point as well. Like, why why do we even care about suffering? If if you think about it, and like the evolutionary perspective on that would probably be that um, animals that are suffering generally aren't fit to reproduce, not always, but generally they are. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that that really answers the question. I can, I can see that um, a human could um, be concerned well, he, about his, the suffering of another human, but to feel his, the suffering of an animal, Aaron? His question is, is itself a valid point? Why do we care when we, when we, when we hear a, a puppy yelp in pain? Okay, I mean, life is valuable. And, and suffering, I, I don't consider suffering valuable. I think, you know, is some, suffering is something that should be minimized. It, it should be devalued. Okay, I mean, and, and the fact that we, you know, you, you want to talk about everything that we do is for selfish reasons. When we go to help somebody who needs help, or we, you know, when we see somebody in urgent need or somebody that's injured and, and we have to stop the bleeding, this isn't for our selfish needs. This is, you know, an no, I'm sorry, you misunderstood my point, Aaron. What I was saying that in, in no, relation to the even, no, let me let me finish because you misunderstood. In so far as the evolutionary explanation of it is concerned, I can understand why we'd have a concern of the suffering of humans, but not necessarily for animals. But we do have a a uh, a, 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 a compassion for animals that are suffering, and there doesn't right. seem to be the evolutionary explanation, which I thought was Daniel's point. I no, I would. Okay. okay, I was just I was just noting that Daniel's question was also a valid point. Go ahead, Daniel. Um, well, no, because like my question is why like why do we care? But um, like we care about animal suffering because it's it's a it's a byproduct of us caring about other humans. It's it's just a, a natural byproduct. I would agree with that. It is a byproduct. Yes. Concordance. No, I, I, I really like the way you just said that because it, it sounded for a moment like you were going with a strictly adaptationist interpretation of how we behave. Some of it is not adaptive. The th some of the things that we do do not increase our fitness. 
Um, and and it's, it's a myth that every single thing that we possess, every behavior that we have is the direct result of, of positive selection or negative selection. Sometimes these things are, are as, as uh, Stephen Jay Gould would have said, a spandrel, right? It's a, it's a space that gets filled in between two adaptive traits. Um, and I think you've, you've nailed it right there. So that's my only comment. All right, I okay, think we're Daniel. done. Thank you. Yes, Daniel, unless there's anything else, I'm going to move on because I now see that we've got about eight uh, contact requests and I've already got two people in line. But thank you very much indeed for the call. Um, and for that reason, we will move straight on. Um, again, just to mention the banner as I'm bringing people in, if you go above the video, you will see that there is a banner with links, direct links to our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and also our website, which is still under construction. Um, the Skype link, link unfortunately doesn't seem to be working at the moment, but we will and also, endeavor to also sort DPR. That out. Yeah, DPR, we, we seem to have lost um, the empty chair on the Block TV thing. Uh, we have it in the Skype call. We have this empty chair with William Lane Craig's name on it. Um, that doesn't seem to be on the Block TV. So I have a horrible feeling that he's about to appear, and there he is. Oh my God, that's frightening. Let's let's <laughs> let's move on though. Um, Ian, welcome to the show. Hello. Yes, um, I'm just taking the whole conversation kind of in a different direction. I am recently graduating. I'm actually graduating next week with a chemistry degree. And one of the things that I'm really worried about is I've been applying to a lot of different places, and I'm very openly an atheist. I have open debates with a lot of people, and it's publicly available on my Facebook, my Twitter. And I worry sometimes that when I'm applying for places, that I'm going to be in some way discriminated against. I don't know if this is something that I should worry about or something I need to be worried about, but just with the amount of people that look down upon people who publicly declare themselves atheists, it, it does worry me. So let me ask you a question then. Which side of the Mason-Dixon line do you live on? Iowa. Okay, well, you've at least you've got that going for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, no, I, I couldn't go south. <laughs> I mean, well, having, having, like, having said that, I mean, it, it's, it's been my experience that, you know, the higher up in um, you know, the academic echelons you go, uh, the less that it matters. There's almost a population inversion once you get... Um, probably to the PhD level, I would guess, where it really doesn't matter where you go, virtually everyone is an atheist or uh, you're at the best on the soft end of deism. Oh, yeah. I, I've been seeing that throughout my class. I go to a very small college, and there's going to be 10 people in my class graduating with a degree in chemistry. So out of the 10 of us, nine of us are open atheists. So that's at least a nice thing. It is the tenth person uh, ambiguous atheist, possibly. Uh, yeah, I th <laughs> they 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 claim agnostic. I believe that. It's that's good enough, because we've it's, we've, it's we've established it's, agnostic yeah, uh, means the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And agnostic it's, means you're too much of a... Hour and we spent 30 minutes on it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> agnostic only means that you're an atheist who, uh, who doesn't want to commit and you don't want to use scary words to describe yourself. But that is, in fact, what you are. Can, well, I, just, uh, can I just interject very briefly? For those that have sent yeah. contact requests and have not put the topic of what they would like uh, to discuss on, um, resend it, um, because I am ignoring all of the ones that simply say add me as a contact. Um, sorry, Ian, back to you. Now, I, I was uh, just kind of interjecting in one way uh, and saying there's a funny thing about the college I actually go to is considered a Lutheran private college, which is the biggest joke because I found more atheists that have become atheists by taking religion classes here. It's been the biggest deconversion of people. What's the what's um, basic Lutheran, Lutheran message? Because I, I'm not sure I'm familiar with it. <laughs> I just go to the college because it's by my house. 
Uh, <laughs> what, what are the tenets of their particular No, he's talking about Lutheran religion, yeah, but, but, but Ian uh, is not talking about Lutheran oh, sorry, religion. I, I, he's, he's talking about a Lutheran college. Yeah. Right. Uh, I actually had a chemistry professor try to explain a uh, d orbital uh, to a gen chem class by explaining that it can look like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I uh, made sure I never took another class from him. But yeah, likewise, I had a I had a chemistry professor. That what d orbitals fists. look like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? I I, I know I. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 the, the, at times I think I've got a fairly vivid imagination, but d orbitals. Yeah, I know. The, the the electron density in the center, I guess one is just a lot less important. Yeah, my chemistry. I had a chemistry professor briefly, who uh, argued that um, uh, that that theories w became laws once they were proven, and I uh, I dropped from his class immediately. Awesome. Well, that's uh, that's kind of the just the question I wanted to ask, and you know, share my experience a little bit. But thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Uh, I, I mean, this is a, um, an interesting question. How how can something resemble the Trinity? I mean, Francis Collins apparently saw the Trinity in a frozen um, waterfall, but yeah, but, but uh, if, if yeah, it's going to be a you, Trinity and all of them are the same which we're told, why was why is one bigger than the other? I mean, you could have a water molecule, couldn't you? Have, but which one's going to be the hydrogen and which one's going to be the oxygens? Uh, two, sorry, uh, the other uh, way around. Two hydrogens, yeah. Um, but the thing that gets me is the d orbitals, if anything, they look like sex toys. <laughs> Family show, Thunder. 